everybody! Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm finally going to be doing a painting. And as I said in my last video, I'm going to be using the White Knights watercolors, the 12 pan set that I just bought. Now I do have older White Knights watercolors. I've got one of their large palettes and then a smaller palette. But they were not as transparent as they are now, and I'm going to be getting into that during my video. But this is the set I'll be using. There's the colors right there. Of course, I put them on my chart upside down. So, uh, But anyway, I've got them here, and these are what I'm going to be using. And we're going to do a landscape today. It'll be a misty landscape, and it should be a lot of fun. There's going to be trees, mountains, grasses, you name it. it sh it's very, It's a very pretty photo and it is from Unsplash so I will be posting the link down below in the description box as well as you will see the the photo I almost said painting you will see the photo throughout as I'm painting it so that you can follow along so let's get started shall we today I'm just going to use a few of the new brushes that I received in the last couple of weeks um, of course Silver black velvets are not new to me. I just bought a couple of new ones because they wear out fairly quickly in my eyes. I mean, I'm used to animal hair brushes that never seem to wear out at all unless you abuse them. But um, these silver black velvet brushes, they do get frayed ends because they are part synthetic. So the other one that I, uh, I did use two of those, that was the number two and the number four. And then the other one I used was the golden natural by silver which was a number 10 and as far as synthetics go I really do enjoy these brushes I think they're fairly well made for synthetics so those are the ones that I will be using today I ended up only using those three brushes and this painting is going to be a simple quick and easy painting that we'll be doing uh, I will post the photo up here in the corner so that you can see it and like I said there will be a link down below as well now, while I'm getting everything set up here, I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about the White Knight's paints that I'll be using today. Um, you're all familiar with White Knight's paints, I'm sure. They're by Nevskaya Pelitra, and they are now much more transparent than they ever were before, and light fast. They're artist quality paints. Uh, back in the day, probably 10 years ago at least, when I got my last palettes of White Knights, which I still love, they are more semi-transparent. There are less paints than in the set that are transparent, and I believe at that time there were only 48 or 60 colors total. Uh, in 2020, they started to upgrade their paints, and were becoming, they were making them more transparent and more light fast. By 2021, they were up to 108 colors in their collection. And that included 18 new pastel shades and seven metallic shades. And by 2022, they were up to 120 colors in their range. That included their 80 classic colors, 59 of which are single pigment, which is amazing. And then, of course, they had the 18 pastels and the seven metallic colors. Then they also added another range, which I'm waiting on to arrive. So I will be doing an updated video with those. And that is their 15 granulated colors. Uh, I believe there's more than that now. There are sets of blues, greens, browns, whatever, you know. And now I'm getting the set of 15 that is in a palette, I believe. So when I get those, I will update you all. Some interesting information I found out about White Knight's paints was that the factory was founded in 1934 and started as a small varnish and paint factory, which was built by the English production engineer Julius Fridlender in 1900 on the river Chernaya. Nevskaya Pelitra's materials are used for restoration works in such museums and monuments as the Hermitage, the State Russian Museum, the Tretikov Gallery, the Church of Christ the Savior, St. Basil Cathedral, the Grand Kremlin Palace, and many other monuments. 
The extra fine artist's watercolors of the White Knight series are manufactured with finely dispersed and light fast pigments. The paint structure also comprises gum arabic. So if you're interested in the White Knight's paint line, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them in your artist stores, uh, wherever you shop. I'm really looking forward to the granulating set to come so that I can check those out. Now I noticed that when I was putting some of the colors together today, they're blue, they're ultramarine, the black, and the sap green. They granulated and separated out and looked beautiful. And I did um, notice it also on my paper. Now right now I'm just putting in the actual sketch which is just a few lines and I decided to move the sky up a little bit um, and give the landscape more attention. I thought that that would have been pretty that way. The sky is fine in the photo but there's not really a lot going on in the sky except for that big sun that they probably enlarged whenever she um, edited it. But the most interesting part and the focal point to me in the photo was down below, not so much the sun, although she did change it to make the sun the focal point. So we can go ahead and you can just draw in your lines. They don't have to be perfect. I didn't follow this to the letter. I kind of did my own thing and used the photo as reference, which is what I prefer to do anyway. Now, as you can see here, I'm just using a round stencil to make a circle for the sun, which is not necessary. You can use anything round that you have. If it's a quarter or a small, like a shot glass or something round, anything round will work. Now the colors that I used in this were ultramarine blue and cobalt blue. I kind of mixed them together for the sky, but it was mostly ultramarine. I also used sap green, burnt umber, and lamp black. So those were the only colors that are really necessary for this. In fact, you could skip the cobalt blue. Just go with ultramarine, sap green, burnt umber, and lamp black. Now, if you don't have a sap green, then you could use some cadmium lemon or cadmium yellow to add to your ultramarine to get your greens. And now you'll just want to take your brush and with clean water, just go ahead and wet the entire sky area. You can leave the sun dry um, or you can wet it and then just go up to the edge of the sun um, or actually a little bit to the inside of the sun so that the mistiness will flow into the sun a little bit. I didn't think to do this until later, so you'll see me doing it later. Then you'll just want to go ahead in with your blue. Like I said, I used a little bit of cobalt in my mix, but mostly it was ultramarine blue. And I'm just kind of looking at the sky and just putting a little bit of blue patchiness in here and there. And that's pretty much it. I will also mix a bit of gray and put some darker clouds in. Down near the mountain line, you can see them in the photo. Now I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and add it into my ultramarine blue to make a gray so that I can start putting the color onto the mountain range. There isn't a lot of color there, so I'm adding a little bit extra just to define a little more of that mountain range but you can follow it exactly like the photo if that's what you'd like to do. Before doing the mountain range though, you may want that water to dry in the skyline so that you don't have color bleeding. So I'm going in around the bottom of the painting where the yellow grasses are and I'm just going to put in some yellow ochre wet into wet, just a light color because I want to go back over that and add some blades of grass later. So we'll do that and you'll just go around the rocks that are sitting there. And now I'm going back into the mountain area and wetting that area down. 
I'll put in, like I said, a little more gray near the top. Sorry about my head in the photo there. And then um, I'm also going to put in some of the trees. And some of these trees are going to appear much grayer rather than green until we get to the foreground. I didn't wait for that sky to dry completely and you can see the green bleeding a little bit up into the sky. That's okay because there are trees that pop up there and I'll just leave it for trees. Now I'm just kind of looking around to see where this mist is along the mountains and dropping in trees here and there. To the right they appear a little more green and then to the left they're a little bit more gray. So I will change over to some gray and then it'll come back to green again. And I'm making them less defined, obviously, in the background. I want them much less defined. Now that green is a little bit bright and I'm not worried about it because this is going to be a background and then I'm going to put trees in front of it. I'm leaving the white areas though as clouds within the mountains. If you find that you need more white, then you can just go ahead and lift up some of the color. I use a clean brush, dab it dry, and then I just lift that color off so that I can get more mistiness within the area. You'll see I'm not going to like what I put down and I'm going to just go ahead in and lift the color right out.
Now I'm going back to do a little more work around the sun when I realized I should have wet that area earlier. So I'm just kind of working it in and then I'm trying to soften the edges a little bit so that it looks like the sun is misty. At one point though, I decided to add a little bit of yellow to the sun just to change the color from the clouds and right here. It's just very subtle. I don't think it even picks up on camera, maybe just slightly.
Now I'm just basically putting on finishing touches here and there on the rocks, the grass, the trees, the sun, <laughs> and then I will be done. So I hope you enjoyed this painting. It was just a quick, simple painting to do. It, it's not difficult at all. And uh, it's fun to work on the mistiness of the mountain range. So I thought I would just throw that in there today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you all next time. So remember, in the meantime, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care. God bless you. And I will see you soon with more painting videos. Bye-bye, everybody.